Hi guys, welcome back. This is the third video, but the second part of the tutorial. Uh, where we left off was we had this completed mesh. Um, so yours, if you were following along, should be looking something like this. We've got the little notches there. We've got the cutouts. Um, I didn't actually add any middle bars to these things, but I suppose if you're not going to be lifting them, it doesn't have to be practical. Um, and that's just extra polygons that we can just do without, to be fair. Uh, yeah, you should have these rings here and here. Um, at the very end, I'll show you how to just model a very basic sort of bar that goes down. So you can slot it in if you so want to. So, what we were going to move on to was unwrapping this beast. So, this is probably the bit that most people get confused with. <laughs> what we need to do is enter edit mode. Now what we need to do is go back into full go back into the full thing here so we've got all of the properties and everything visible. To do that it's shift and space. I'll just turn my screen cast keys on again. Yeah, text, that's perfect. Super. Right, so now you can see everything I'm pressing, which is always fun. Whee! Oh, I can only get to seven. Anyway. So unwrapping this what we need to do is add what's called seams or cuts so we need to go in edge select we can do that one of two ways press the edge select there or shift no control and tab and just edge there shut up um, so what we need to do here is essentially um, treat this as though it's a cardboard box everyone's had a cardboard box, everyone's had a delivery um, you open the box and the flaps open and um, if you turn the box upside down nine times out of ten there's a string of sellotape going across the bottom um, you can peel that off and then obviously the bottom flaps will then open and you'll notice that it folds flat if you were to open it out completely then you've got the net that's what we need to do with this model we need to put in cuts where it can fold essentially leaving us with the net of this particular model. Sorry, I had a complete brain fart then. My mouth stopped working. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, and I'll explain why in a minute, is I'm just going to put, I'm going to highlight these sections here. And again, to highlight, you literally just hover in your cursor over a particular line, right clicking to select it, and then to select multiple, hold shift whilst you're clicking and just click on the ones you want. So I'm just going to select all the ones around this particular side profile here. So you've got that sort of looking thing going on. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now what you can do is press shift and alt. Okay, and you can just click and it will select everything on that particular loop. So, I'm just going to get some more real estate here. So, now with both of those selected and done, what we're going to do is compress, compress, press Control E to bring up the edges selection mode and what we call here mark seam. You'll notice they turn red. And if I deselect them, you can see they're red now. So, when you come to unwrap it, they are essentially what you've chosen to cut. So you've chosen to cut along these lines, so this, this face will no longer be connected to this face. So when we come to unwrap this, you will see that we've got these particular things just on their own, which is fine, which is what we want. Okay, so what we need to do now is make this unwrap as nice as possible. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mark the whole bottom section there. And the same again on that side. And I marked all of that again by pressing Alt Shift or Shift Alt. Doesn't really matter which way you press it, and then just right clicking on that particular selection there. Okay. So that means that entire bottom section will be its own its own uh 
group of faces when we unwrap it. I can't really describe very well today. I've just finished work, quite tired, just put my girls to bed. And brain is definitely shutting down. Okay, so these things won't unwrap very well unless we cut them out separately. So again, Alt and click. And to make them unwrap slightly nicer, we're going to go click. 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 Right, so what this cut has done is essentially removed this box from this top section. So that's fine. But if we tried to un if we tr tried twide, Jonathan Ross going on. If we try to unwrap just that box, you'd get strange sort of stretching or deformation of texture. Um, because this point would try to lie down flat and it would stretch these corners out and the texture wouldn't look too great. So, all I've done is just put a cut on that corner, that corner and that corner, which basically means that if we were to lie this down flat now, this whole edge would, would fold out that way, this whole edge would fold out that way, this one that way, and this one that way, so therefore you're not going to get any stretching of texture. All of these are going to remain the same size and shape they are now. So, Control E, Mark Seam. Okay, I'm just going to do exactly the same on here. Control E, mark seam. I do hope I'm not going too fast for anybody. I know it's a bit daunting when you're using a new interface. Um, if you are struggling, please just say so in the comments and I'll try to slow down in future. Uh, right, so that's pretty much all of the textures done for that section. I'm quite tempted just to make the top section its own texture. I think I will do. So all I'm doing here is just cutting along this top edge. So this rectangle is all its own piece. Control A, mark seam. It doesn't really matter what you mark. All, all I'm trying to do at the moment is just make this unfold as nice as possible. Um, to be honest, just to be a bit peculiar, what I'm going to do is select that top one there and that top one there. Control E and clear seam. So then it's all one piece. It should fold out. So what I'm going to do here is unfold, unclick these. You see, this is what happens with my modeling. I do something and then as I'm going around, clear seam. I change my mind, which is always fun. Because I'm just thinking if this whole thing just lies out flat on one texture, it might be easier, it's less cuts, it's less UVs to move around. It could work, it might not, but this whole thing is all about trial and error and I'm doing it along with you, so it's all good. Right, so what we need to do now is we need to mark these hoops, these these metal hoops for cutting as well, but I want full view of these things, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, just any old line inside there, and like I've done before, if you press L, it selects all of that particular mesh that's connected. And what I'm going to do here is hide this from view. I'm not going to delete it, I'm going to hide it. And to hide, I press H. It's really that simple. It just gets it out of your way so you can concentrate on stuff that you can see. Shut up! People trying to communicate with me, don't they? I'm a hermit. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just simply, the one that's most out of view, is just select that particular line there. This basically means this thing will fold out to be essentially a rectangle. So mark seam and do that one there. Instead of pressing mark seam every time, I'm just gonna select them all. Oh, my phone's dying now as well. Everything's going on. So professional. Right, okay, so they're done. What I need to do now is bring back the mesh that I had already, and to unhide things, it's Alt H. Okay, Alt H to unhide. So now we have what is essentially a fully marked up, ready to unwrap model. 
again control s save I don't do it nearly often enough um, I've lost a fair amount of work through not saving before it's amazing how much you can do in a little bit of time between save points uh, it gets infuriating I've got a lot of models that I haven't finished because I'm so infuriated at not saving anyway that's enough babble from me I'm gonna get back into the full view which is shift space get back into that view and then what we need to do is bring up our texture panel so down here you see this little editor type button just next to that you'll see this triangle effect this thing click that and drag it keep hold of it keep hold of it keep hold of it keep hold of it get it about center and let go now that button there click that one and what we want is UV image editor click that and the square will appear so we want a new texture for this what I'm going to do is click new I'm going to call this concrete barrier that's fine 1024 1024 it's about right if it's just going to be a standard asset that's not really going to see much action you could go down to 512 by 512 for the purposes of this I'm just going to keep it 1024 1024 um, what you can do is the generated type you can have a, a UV grid or a color grid uh, it just helps you see stretching on the model there's genuinely shouldn't be any stretching on this one so what will happen is your screen will turn black and you go oh my god I broke it no just scroll out it always goes huge don't know why so this is probably the bit you've all been waiting for how do I texture Jay well you've got your cuts you've got your seams in place everything should be ready to go so put it in face mode that's not necessary it's just something I always do um, press A to select all and you'll notice this disappears that's fine doesn't matter and then hit unwrap unwrap is U you press U well with everything selected what we can do is a couple of things from here uh, smart VU project is for the lazy people uh, if you don't want to cut it yourself but and you don't want any stretching um, you can just hit that and it just unwraps it with zero stretching but it doesn't really organize it very well and it, it, it's, it's a bit of a mess um, cube projection cylinder projection we're not going to be using these things uh, they can be used for other things but not for this right now so because we've taken the time and put the seams in where we want the cuts to happen we can just hit unwrap so as you'll see this is what we're left with uh, now you'll notice the black text that we generated isn't there anymore so what we can do here is click this little picture icon and there is our texture there concrete barrier it's not really a texture as such but right so what we need to do is move this UV around to utilize as much of this space as possible so oh sorry that's a uh, shift space again with my cursor in here just to make this a bit bigger to be honest we can't really make this much bigger because if we try and scale it these things will go out of the picture so all we can do really is not a great deal but that's that's quite nicely unwrapped it's zero seams zero sort of visible stretching uh, again all I did to select all of that is hover my mouse over it and press L I'm just going to move it up here L G to move hover it over L to select all G to move hover it over L to select G to move now I'm going to do what is known as a box selection so it's B it brings it up you can move it around you click once and drag and there you go you let go G to move S to scale I just want a little bit more detail on this rust texture I'm going to add in um, okay now to move these are the this is what I'm talking about the box section so if I hadn't put those cuts in which is essentially this cut here it wouldn't have folded out nice and flat with no stretching these two things would have been joined together like that and you would have had stretching in the corners and it would have been all sorts of badness now on this particular model it's not going to make a great deal of difference because 
No one's going to look inside there and go, Oh, look at that stretch texture. Oh, look at this. No, no one's going to do that. But it's always good practice just to get into knowing where seams go. Okay, so what we want to do is just drag this over here. LG. <laughs> LG branding. Oh dear. Um, scale those up a smidge. I'm just trying to get as much detail in all of this as possible. Um, haven't really utilized this space as well as I could have done. Um, to select multiples of these again it's shift L, shift L, shift L. I'm just going to rotate those. I don't know why but I'm going to rotate them. So it's R and then it's 90 degrees so you type in 90. Enter. And then it's going to plunk them there. This is more a time wasting exercise to be fair. I'm just trying to make these look prettier on the texture. I'm going to move this ever so slightly and then I'm going to scale it just to take up more of the room. I'm going to move this thing along the Y axis because because we're in 2D space we've got the X and the Y axis, no Z axis. So I'm going to move this along the Y axis, so that's G, Y, just a smidge, just a smidge. And that is pretty much us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bake an ambient occlusion map to the texture. Now, to do this, what we need to do, I'm just going to scale this over here. A bit more. We don't need any lights on here because it's just using ambient light. So I don't need any point lights or anything like that. So what I need to do is just make sure that the model is selected and make sure I'm in Blender Internal Renderer. Uh, Cycles Renderer which is this lovely jobby here, doesn't actually have uh, baking ambient occlusion or baking textures yet, I don't think. So just make sure you're in Blender Render. And then what we need to do is just scroll down to the very, very bottom of the render settings and you'll see Bake. Click Bake and then Bake Mode Ambient Occlusion. Now you hit normalize because it just accentuates everything, makes it a bit more good. Terrible England, very terrible England. Um, so what? Just it's pretty simple. You just hit bake, and there you go. That's baked. So that has just created the ambient occlusion map for you. Uh, pretty boring looking, to be fair. But hey ho, uh, now we're going to be using that particular ambient occlusion map with the texture just to give it a little bit of extra realistic shadows. I'll show you what that texture looks like now. So as you can see, it's just baked in a couple of the shadows just to give it that little bit of extra realism. Inside there is obviously going to be darker, near the hoops is going to be darker, underneath there. It's uh, and obviously in the crease, it just helps to find things a little bit more. It looks a bit bubbly, but we can edit that out with the texture anyway. So, I'm going to leave that one here because I want the next tutorial to, all be, but to be all about texturing. Um, in the next one, I'm going to show you how to bring in different textures, how to um, add layer masks, opacities, just how to change the entire texture just to get the most out of the texture. Um, so the next tutorial is going to be using GIMP. Um, we're going to be coming to and from Blender, but it's mainly going to be about using GIMP and uh, creating the diffuse, diffuse 2, normal, specular. Um, I don't need to create an emission or illumination map. I don't know if Reloaded supports those yet. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave that one here, guys. Um, so thanks very much for watching. If you like this one, hit the like button. If you want to see more, uh, hit subscribe. And yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.